Do you remember back in July of 2014 when ejaculation was a funny punchline? This is amazing! <laughs> yeah, neither do I. Which is why we're going to go back through and revisit our favourite kart races in preparation of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Also because it's over 100 episodes of the show later, and those old videos could definitely use an upgrade. So, roll the intro! <coughs> Following Crash 3 Warped in 1998, Naughty Dog was essentially done with the Crash Bandicoot series. However, before their departure from Universal Interactive, the team slapped together a quick kart racer in an attempt to murder the franchise on the spot. They thought that adding in some crazy alien known as Nitrous Oxide was so far out, fans wouldn't accept the game and would move on with their lives. But little did the Naughty Dogs know that what they'd actually created was one of the most technically sound, energetic, fun and replayable kart races in the history of kart races. And of course, Crash fans ate it up and continue to eat it up 20 years later. This game released in 1999, and here we are still talking about it, still playing it, and still mastering it. Of all the Mario Kart clones to be released over the years, how many of them can claim that? And tell me, after 1999, how many Mario Kart clones are actually Crash Team Racing clones? So let's get into why that is exactly. Of course, there are the design aspects. For a PS1 game, it's rare to see a world so vibrant and full of life, which is a theme across all of Naughty Dog's titles. Every single area is ripe with detail, and every single course has memorable set pieces combined with interesting track segments. You can't approach any of these with the same game plan, and that makes it special. You have some of the more simple areas, sure, but the more difficult tracks test what you know about the kart mechanics, with big jumps to boost off of, wide turns to slide around, 90 degree turns where you need to be more precise with your movement, and then the mastery of all the various shortcuts we have at our disposal. It's always fun playing this as a result, because every track is refreshing next to the previous one you played. Throw on top of that an absolutely gorgeous soundtrack that sells the atmosphere of each location perfectly, and we're already off to a great start here. The game has all of the familiar modes you can expect from any kart racer. Single races and tournaments, time trials, yeah, good luck with those. I've been breaking my thumbs on these things for years. But one of CTR's greatest attributes is that it also includes an adventure mode. You get to pick one of the eight base characters, each with different levels of ability. The objective is to race across four different hub areas, winning races to collect trophies. Earning these grants you access to the boss races against Ripperoo, Pinstripe Potteroo, Papu Papu, and Komodo Joe. Your reward for beating them is a key to the next area. Standard stuff, but also inside of Adventure Mode, we have access to a new set of race modes. Of course, we've got the standard trophy race. Relic races are like time trials, but with crates to smash that freeze the clock. CTR races require you to collect the three letters, usually off the main path, and win the race. So it's another level of challenge on top of just simply winning. And crystal challenges have you in an arena, trying to collect all of the crystals before time runs out. All of these take the previously established concepts from the more traditional Crash games, but apply them to the racing genre. 
it's actually so creative. And at the end of it all, you get to face nitrous motherfucking oxide. The dirty cheating bastard. Once you complete everything and race Oxide a second time, he goes back to the planet Gasmoxia and you're done. The whole thing seems kind of redundant looking back, but it really isn't. There has always been a big debate amongst gamers through the years when it comes to couch co-op multiplayer games like this. Is it better to force players to unlock content or should it all just be available from the start? Well, CTR hits the sweet spot in this debate. You start the game with everything you could possibly need, the vast majority of courses and eight races of varying ability, but the adventure mode actually gives you an incentive to unlock the other races and the few extra levels. It might seem like such a minor detail, but it's an important detail this game gets right. And it's also something that gives the game more content overall without actually having to add in more stuff. I think a lot of people like to forget this. It's not about how much you have to offer, it's about how much you can offer with what you already have. And for the time, it was a very forward-thinking concept. Of course, it was stolen straight from Rareware's Diddy Kong Racing, but it's something that's absolutely worth stealing, as the adventure mode in both of these games helps them to stand out. And Mario Kart never really had anything like it, which is one of the reasons I've personally never been committed to them. But look, the only thing that really matters with a kart racer, aside from maybe interesting track design, is the control. For a genre that breeds so much competitiveness, every move needs to land as the player intended. Look at fighting games. A slightly broken mechanic or move, and the entire thing is messed up. And it's the same case for racing games. This is where Crash Team Racing truly shines, and shines brighter than everything else. Control in this game is 100% responsive and tight, without any fault. Now I've heard people claim that they feel this game is TOO tight, but that actually doesn't make any sense. The fact that the control is so tight means that the player is in full control. If you fuck up, that's on you and your ability at the game, which is why CTR is so great at encouraging improvement. As a novice player, yes, you can get through the game normally, but you're constantly reminded about power slides and boosting. Unlike a lot of games, when you initiate a power slide, you can get three additional boosts by timing a button press when this bar gets red, or you see the smoke from your cart turn black. Mastering the power slide and learning how to chain boosts together is the key to unlocking this game. You can also get boosts from launching from a great height, or from those cliché boost pads you'll see all over the track. This is how you gain a new level of speed, and to the game's credit, it does a fairly good job at keeping things balanced. If all you can do is drive around the course, the game won't fuck you up too bad. But the moment you start hitting this next level of speed, man, the AI is going to throw everything it has at you. Which is great, by the way. The added challenge is what keeps it fun. But can you believe that's still not enough? There is actually an even higher level of mastery that most casual players probably don't even know about. And that included me for a long time, by the way. I used to think I was pretty good at this game, but not anymore. The people who have conquered CTR competitively over the years have unlocked an even greater level of speed. Linking so many boosts together and taking advantage of the game's boost reserve system allows you to maintain maximum speed longer than normal. 
and combining all of that with the super speed boosters laid throughout certain courses allows you to reach what has been dubbed Ultimate Sacred Fire. I mean, just look at how fast this is. It's ridiculous. This is why Crash Team Racing is still so beloved all these years later. Speed, speed, so much speed. When it released in 99, it was an absolute beast. But even 20 years later, still, it remains one of the most technically deep and proficient races of all time. And this thing spawned from the same people who made this. And yet, despite the fact that this game was designed to kill Crash's future, Naughty Dog are just so damn good that they made Crash Team Racing instead. Instant fucking success. This was the first game I ever gave a 9 out of 10. That's a big deal. I've only ever given a score that high to two other games since. Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Super Mario Galaxy. What can I say? I'm a fussy bitch. And look, I'll be honest, I still have my gripes with this game too. The fact that Nitrous Oxide is not an unlockable character is thoroughly disappointing. Of course, it was due to system limitations, but it still sucks, as he's such an awesome character. In his place, however, we got Penta Penguin. Yeah, that's a pretty pathetic substitute, but at least his stats are maxed out in the PAL release, so... It's something, I guess. But the other piss-off I've always had is that none of the unlockable races feature outside of Adventure Mode, meaning we're always facing the same lineup of characters. In Mario Kart, on the other hand, everyone shows up to race. It's not important, but that always bummed me out, never seeing my hard work unlocking the characters paid off in arcade mode. That's just me though, and along with Oxide not being playable, the game is still so good, it's not even worth complaining about. What's important is that Crash Team Racing is still, to this day, one of the strongest performers of its entire genre. The game looks and sounds amazing, track design is incredibly thought out and detailed, making each race feel different, all of the characters are fun and cartoony, with a lot of charisma out on the track, something that has become a staple of kart races since. The game is paced fairly well, with a good level of progression and incentive to keep playing, even long after you've beaten Adventure Mode. And on a technical level, I don't think that anything even comes close to this. There is just so much to learn and master, yet the game is still so easy to pick up and play, no matter your skill level. And as a result of all that, its replay value is through the roof. So I can't wait to get hooked on this game all over again. But as we all know by now, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is going to be more than just a simple CTR remake. So be sure to join me next time when we take a look at Crash Nitro Kart. But until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and share. I'm Square Eye Jack and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>